Here, the sound of the Behringer TD3, pen on the left side, and of the Roland TB03, pen on the right side. So, this was everything for this video. See you soon. Bye bye. You, you had my job. <sighs> yeah, whatever. Like, if anybody's paying me for doing this. In this video, I'm gonna show you some of the differences between these two beauties, in terms of sound, of course, but also in terms of sequencing and connectivity, that may lead you to like one more than the other, or will make you go nuts like me and buy both to keep. But now I'm just gonna pan both in center position, they are both at the same level, All both machines are at the maximum volume, so you can hear the real differences, uh, uh, let's dive in. First, we're gonna hear the sound of the filter and the decay on both machines, so starting with the TD3. Soft to waveform, filter all open, I'm gonna dial in a C note. Let's go. Same on the TB. Filter all open, soft to waveform, C. Okay, so let's see the square waveform. Now let's close the filter, saw tooth again. Shh. Be quiet. Square. Now we're just gonna swipe the filter open. And now let's dial in some resonance. On this kind of machines, uh, the TB, maybe we should call them now the T type, because the D on this is gone. Maybe, I don't know. But on the T type of machines, you have to turn uh, the resonance all the way up. Always, always. It's physical. You, you have to do it. And now I'm just going to show you why. <laughs> let's hear it. Full resonance and full cutoff. Same on the TB. Based on the video by Lupop, we all noticed that the filter on the TD3 opens a little bit more than the one on the OG TB303. 
So you just heard that this happens here too. Um, maybe this is one point scored for the TBO3 regarding uh, the emulation of the OG tier 3. Personally, I don't dislike the character of this filter, but uh, eventually, if you want to uh, and darken a little bit the sound internally, you can do it. It's a quite simple procedure, and there are already some videos on YouTube showing how you, how you to do that. You just have to unscrew uh, some screws on the back side, trim a little bit the filter cutoff, uh, and we stay close, just like this. Now, we're just gonna trim this a little bit close, try to find uh, the same spot I made it at first, I can't believe it <laughs> Close your eyes Try to hear the difference <laughs> Okay, let's see the square Okay, so now we're just gonna uh, hear uh, the TD in true salsa, true sausage, with a cut off like this, trying to emulate this, and with the cut off all open, sounding myself like. Uh... Now to the envelope. <laughs> the TD at full square It's nice, it's nice. And now to the decay of the filter. To the envelope. So to two waveform. Full filter on the TD. At my ears, the, the Roland adds some quite of saturation when you fully turn on the envelope. Uh, it, it can be something that you may don't want. And now to the accent part, but in order to fully appreciate this and all the other behavior of these machines, we're just gonna dial in some notes. And here is another crucial difference, the sequencer itself. The TD3 sequencer is a faithful copy of the original TB3 sequencer, except the fact that you can switch the bank while the sequencer is running, things that you can't do on the OG. Let me show you. Now the sequencer is running. You hear, I'm switching banks and he's switching patterns. 
on this and on the OG you cannot. Aside of that, another couple of minor bugs, this and the OG sequencer are in fact identical. But let me show you how it work, we're just gonna put in some notes, easy peasy, beware, it's not meant to sound good, it's a pattern I made to show you all the flavors of the teas. It's like talking about British tea, oh, British breakfast, uh, no, ugh. So please don't complain if it is boring, okay, we already know. So let's begin, choose a pattern, clear it, insert the steps, we're gonna insert four steps, okay, now we're gonna go in time mode, insert four steps again, pitch mode, we're gonna insert a G, a G, an octave up, a G again, and a G, an octave down. A little talk about the transpose on this. This has five octave of range because you can go one octave up, one octave down, and one octave up, one octave down with this tuning. Okay, so it has a total of five reachable octaves. Okay, now we're just gonna put an accent on the first step. Again, exit pitch mode and take again. First step, accent. Now we're gonna we're good to go, but first before I, I can push play. You see, the sequencer won't start, I have to exit the pitch mode or the time mode. So, let's dial in the accent. Let's tune in the envelope. So now I just can't put in notes while the sequencer is running, just like the OG, but on the OG I can choose how many steps the, the, the pattern will have in real time. On this, if I try to do so, just like you show, I just push two steps, one, two, bam, the sequence is gone. And I have to stop again the machine, then in the time mode you will see it took the two steps I did before. And I have to press play again. This doesn't happen on the OG and on this, so I think this is definitely a bug, surely a game killer. Now let's move to the TB. As I said before, program this is a breeze because you just can choose your pattern, clear it, push play, enter the steps, enter the notes. We, have, we said we have a G, a G up, a G down, a G normal, and a G down, okay? This has five, seven octaves of range, sorry, because you can go up and down two octaves with those bottoms, you see? It is blink, it is a standing is one octave, when it's blinking it's two octaves, and one octave with the tuning, so it has seven octaves of range total. Now we're just gonna put in uh, the, the accent on the first step, we're just gonna go back again with this dial that is really so comfortably to use to, to go wherever I want. So first step, put in an accent, okay? And now the sequencer is running, so we just uh, dial in, ain't dial in the time mode. Now that we dial in the time mode, the sequencer will start. Nice. In the accent, lower in the envelope, lower in the filter. Take it back. Steps one, two, three, and four, and the time one, two, three, and four. Okay, and 
gonna hear the slide we're just gonna remove uh, the accents on the first step and then the slide on the second step okay so pitch mode again remove the accent add the slide here pitch mode again remove the accent and then the slide let's go Let's hear some soul tooth now, and uh, we're just gonna. Uh, what can we, can we do? We're just gonna dial in back the accent on the first, and we're gonna add another accent on the third step. So, after the slide. First, before the slide, and after the slide. So, pitch mode, accent, slide, accent. Okay, pitch mode, accent, slide, accent. We are good to go. <laughs> After getting funky! Oh, <laughs> 
Just gonna now uh, dial in a slide on the third with the accent. Okay, so let's go. the resonance I was lying before <laughs> but it's wonderful and <laughs> the same <laughs> gonna put a legato on the last step so time mode one two three and four okay time mode one two three and four let's hear it <laughs> Now we're just gonna remove it again because we're gonna put the slide on the last step. Okay, so pitch mode slide. Okay, again here pitch mode slide. So we have three slides in this pattern. Okay, let's go. Now we're just gonna put the legato on the second step. Pam 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 pam, okay? Pam 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 pam. And remove the slide on the last, okay? They act the same. Now we're just gonna add while the sequence is running. Uh, 
All the slide. All the slide on those steps. And we're gonna hear the sound. Fade away. This will happen here too. So let's put the slide on all steps. And let's run. Night night. And so, uh, uh, as you just see, this for a live situation uh, or for composing uh, or for reverse engineering a track and that's what i just did with the intro this is a no-brainer this works exactly like the og but what else does this machine have in common the distortion just here does out gonna lower the level reprogram the pattern another time so let's clear it out pitch mode g g g g down g g g Again, pitch mode, an accent on the first, a slide on the third, uh, function, eight step, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and time mode, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Mm, no, they, they ain't eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, they hate. Okay. They're good to go. Okay, guys, now get ready to nothing. I said before, I lower the level. Is the tone control? This is a distortion. And now we're just gonna make it bark. I will let you notice that this is quite noisy. I don't know if you can hear the hiss. Okay, now let's move to the TB. I just pre programmed this before with the same pedal. We're just gonna hear it. And it's the same. This has three types of distortion. Let's hear the first. We're gonna overdive first. And you just can uh, change it there. So. You just can't. Check the second type. It has only this control overdrive. And when uh, you just pass the off, this will happen. Would only it off. And a third kind of distortion, a mixture of both. Say the square wave. This uh, has an additional uh, reverb and delay, we're just gonna hear it. The delay, tape delay. <laughs> then the second type of delay, digital delay. 
And then the reverb. It can quite fuck up things, really. <laughs> this has no onboard reverb nor delay at all, only the distortion. For the overdrive, uh, this is uh, uh, a point scored uh, for boss, uh, for bearing, uh, no question. And now let's take a look to the extra features of those machines. So I'm just gonna copy my pattern. I'm just gonna press function, copy. I've just selected the pattern. Select the destination, just gonna press uh, paste and the pattern. Okay, and now I'm gonna do the same uh, here on the TV. I choose the pattern, press function, press this button, copy, select the destination, press paste, and it's done. The same. <laughs> And now just gonna randomize my pattern, my sequence. This has a randomize hidden randomizer function that you can access by pressing these two buttons, but it will completely change your pattern. And that's the reason why I saved it before. If I wanna come back to my original, I just go down here, just gonna try to copy it where it is running. Oh, it worked! It worked! I'm just gonna randomize the game. Now to the DB. This has two randomized functions. The first we're gonna work exactly like this. We're gonna change totally my pattern. The second, we're gonna add some subtle changes to the pattern. It's kinda usable in life. Let's hear this out. First. Third. Gonna go back to my original pattern. Gonna copy it again. Okay. It's gonna use the second function. This adds some subtle changes. Let's talk about the build quality and the connectivity of those. This, the TD, is totally plastic and weighs uh, less than a Volca with us batteries. I swear, less than this. They're not bad for size and they really feel good. This, the TD, is an EV piece of metal. And it weighs uh, even more with batteries because this can run with 4 AA batteries, while this cannot. After all, this is fully analog, while this is digital. This can also be tilted gonna show you. Uh, I think you saw it uh, like a hundred times but I'm gonna show it so you can see the connections. About connectivity they both have the same type of connection sync, uh, create a trigger and the uh, audio in but on the TD this works best in the incoming sound into the filter but the distance of the internal oscillator of the TD so you're just gonna hear the sound that's coming into the filter and the also, you have to send a gate from the TB, TD sorry, sequencer, or you just won't hear anything. Then, they both have a USB port that they use to talk with computers. 
This has its own app, Sim tool, and it's used to edit internal parameters like clock, maybe channels, things that you can do from the panel itself. Let me show you. If I wanted to edit the channel, MIDI channel, I just press function, press channel, just gonna exit <laughs> every time mode of pitch mode, just gonna press function, press channel, and I'm into the channel selection, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, no, this is, a, this is the output channel, okay, and this is the input channel, okay, to go over forward further to the selection, you have to press it a couple of times. Now I'm just gonna, I think I screwed up. <laughs> and uh, for changing uh, the clock, you have to press function one time, press function, press these two together and you're into the selection, MIDI, USB, internal clock and the pulse station per quarter of the clock, okay? Also, this cable uh, is used to send MIDI note sequences data to the unit uh, from the Sintool hub. And that's the only way to write MIDI data from an external source. Even if you can play MIDI notes into the MIDI port, it doesn't store them into its sequencer. The reason is, as I shown you before, that the sequencer uh, won't uh, record the notes uh, while it's running. You can't enter the pitch mode. It is a step-based sequencer. So, just like the OG, you can't uh, write notes uh, from the outside. On these, there are no problem at all. The TBUSB port acts as a power plug and also can do audio and sequencing and MIDI in and out, all at the same time, all to one cable. This, when connected to a computer, can act also as an audio interface, can take a signal into its audio import and send it unprocessed to the TB master or into the hub. So, this is not as somebody says only a Gestina box. But let me explain a little more. If I want to record into a dog like Ableton Live, this, I'll have to set up two channels into my DAW, one for audio data and one for MIDI data. Also, I'll have to buy an external audio interface in order to transmit the audio from this into my DAW. So, two channels and one external audio interface. With the TB03, you plug in your USB cable, set the TB as an audio C interface, open an external instrument, uh, we're talking uh, always uh, about Ableton Live, set it to the TB and it's all already there, audio, MIDI, into one channel. You can think, wonderful of digital world. But uh, I'm not sure about that at all, because Roland uh, gives us uh, the LCO2 that is totally analog, same boutique format and can uh, behave uh, exactly like this with the computer. Audio, MIDI, into the USB cable. And now my conclusions. It's an app enable that Roland did a great job sampling the TB sound. And with this killer sequence of features can help you develop your ideas quite faster and can make you act like a crazy horse during live sets. Plus, is an audio interface, can be totally controlled and act as a MIDI controller and then the blunt weapon for sure. This, this, this. I simply say that. At this price point, you can't get anything on this earth so close to the OG sound and feel. So if you're looking for the cheapest, best sounding clone of the TB303, this is the way to go. Even if it has some minor bugs, Behringer's support is second to none, and I really think they will fix this soon. And here I'm gonna give you my talks. Roland, you keep on talking about how much you don't like Ghostbusters. But for real, you had 14 years to digest all your broken down and give us another TB. Maybe call it TB to TB Mark II, make it a 2 TBs in one, whatever you want. You really think that that thing wouldn't sell? It would have literally fly off the shelves. But no, you had to wait 14 years to let a random guy on YouTube explain to you why you really had one job. Because the fact is that TD3 hasn't even reached the shelves. Somebody says 2000, somebody else says 2000 units per color were sold out in less than, than 3 hours. All the first batch, gone. And two days ago, the second batch has gone sold out, again! So this is rotting history, ladies and gentlemen. And they have a lot more already pre-ordered. So Behringer showed the world that you can make it anytime you want. But you just simply don't want. You prefer to let somebody else listen to your own customers. 
We don't want you to see you eaten up by competitors. And I guess evil competitors don't want to do that. Or Behringer will have closed this filter by default. They don't want you to shoot your dead heater. So please grab your things and step up the game in the an analog and digital world of synthesizer. Look you did in the past. You should make peace with your ghosts so that you can stop chasing them and they will stop chasing you. So, these were my thoughts. I got sentimental because I'm a rolling fanboy since I have memory. And I'm a fanboy who buys all the stuff so you see in my videos. I don't even work in the music industry, sadly. I work uh, 14 uh, hours uh, at week uh, in an office, in an hospital. So if you wish to help uh, this channel grow uh, and go on, uh, uh, if you have uh, any... Any particular request about any synthesizer gear you want me to review, just feel free to ask, to say that, and maybe to throw them on yet my buy my coffee link that I will give you down in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe, put a thumbs up, please comment this video with your thoughts. So that's really it, thanks for watching guys, and may the winter of love be with you.